late 2000s to 2010s was a really weird time for Transformers in terms of the movies. Like, in terms of, like, the overall franchise, like, it's been going strong with, like, um, shows such as Transformers Animated, Transformers Prime, and, uh, Transformers Cyberverse. But when it comes to the movies, it's been, like, one hell of, like, a confusing roller coaster. The first Transformers movie? It's, it's, it's pretty good. It still holds up. It's not really the best, but it's like, um, Sentinel Magnus approves here. Revenge of the Fallen fucking sucks. Dark of the Moon is actually pretty great. I understand why everybody and their mother has been saying this is the best Transformers movie in the Bayverse overall. Look, hear me out, fam, but... I actually really like Age of Extinction. It is both an ironic and an ironic masterpiece. I will make a video about this movie soon. Ugh! And Bumblebee was pretty freaking awesome. This is really the light in the darkest hour in terms of like giving this franchise a much needed um boost up after, like, the train wreck I mentioned previously. However, overall, like, these movies, like, in terms of, like, the continuity and what they did to the franchise, except for Bumblebee, is... uh... fine. Now, I bring this up before talking about Rise of the Beast because compared to the other movies, which includes, like, Bumblebee, I want to say that this movie is even better than the entire Bayverse overall, and maybe even better than Bumblebee, like, oh my god, like, I am, like, I am going completely off script because I want y'all to know just how much joy and excitement this movie brought to me, like, this is, this is such, a, like, a great love letter to Beast Wars and, like, such a great love letter to, like, the overall franchise because, like, even if you're someone who has, like, no way of knowing what Transformers is, this is, like, still an enjoyable movie overall. Now, it's not perfect. You know, this is Transformers, like, nothing is perfect, even, like, the very best of the best is not perfect. It definitely has flaws, but overall, like, this is such an enjoyable movie that renewed my faith in, like, Transformers being on the big screen because, like, it does show that Transformers still got it. And I'm gonna go explain the good, the bad, and the transit. When it comes to my thoughts regarding this movie, which is like, like I said, is the reason why I'm going to go off script for this video. Before we dive into it, though, um, I'm just going to say it right now. Um, I will be discussing spoilers in length to um, properly convey my thoughts about like the very strongest elements of like the movie and one thing that brought it that prevented it from being a 10 out of 10 for me so um letting y'all know right now um i will be discussing spoilers so click off the video right now and then go back to it after you watch it okay anyways three two one pablito spark nose version this is a nine out of ten for me also, another disclaimer. As y'all know, if you're familiar with me by now, you may be wondering, how does Val feel about, like, a very certain aspect of the movie that, I don't know, maybe involving a... Yes. yes! I need to make my case clear against anyone who may be wondering if the absence of the funny purple dinosaur um, hinders my enjoyment of this movie. I'm going to let you all know right now, it does not. I sadly accepted the reality of like the funny purple dinosaur not showing up, but don't worry, I still have hope for my chaotic king of... Yes. Okay, I got that elephant in the room out of the way, so let's go on to the review. So, what prevented the movie from being, like, 
a perfect 10 out of 10 for me is just like um, a few couple of nitpicks and like um, two problems I had with the movie. So let's go start off with the nitpicks. And the perfect way to start it off is explaining this guy. So this is a cut character named Transit. Um, he was essentially cut out of the movie because like um, test audiences found him too scary, which um, I'm just gonna let my boy Kean explain it. I wanna talk about it. I find this reasoning to cut him out pretty flawed because um, let's just say the test audiences would be a really, have a big shock if they see what the rest of the Transformers has to offer. Additionally, I find this reasoning to be pretty flawed because like, um, as you see in this like tidbit from Trance's TF Wiki page, um, I felt like it would have added a lot more to Optimus in terms of like um, his um, cynical, depresso ego state throughout the movie. And um, based on like what little footage there is available of the scene, um, it looks pretty awesome. And that ties into like um, one of the issues I have with this movie. So um, before we move on, um, the director says that he is hoping that this scene will get released in home video soon once the movie finishes its theatrical run. So, um, let's go wait and see to see what we're missing of the Trans Icon Transit. Speaking of the first issue, let's go talk about it. Um, like, while the movie's pacing is good in terms of, like, moving the plot along and giving the characters a moment to shine, um... I definitely feel like it's a bit flawed in terms of like characters such as the other Maximals and like um, even like the other Terracons like um, except for like Primal and Ares are like Cheater and Rhinox are kind of there like like it's really a damn shame because like um, Cheater's voice sounds really good and um, we actually don't get to hear a lot of David Sabolov as um Rhinox, though the movie does make up for it by having him voice Battle Trap. And speaking of Battle Trap, like I felt like both Battle Trap and um, Nightbird could have benefited from a little bit more screen time too, because like actually, because like Nightbird is mother, I freaking love her, and um, I mean, come on, Battle Trap has the biggest titties in the in the West. Like he can compete with Baber's Optimus. So um, yeah, like in a nutshell, I feel like um the movie's pacing could have benefited by having the movie have like extra thirty minutes of screen time. So um yeah, but thankfully it's not much of a problem for like the rest of the movie. So um let's go move on to the second issue. The movie's ending is pretty whack. So, like, at the end of the movie, like, after the Autobots and Maximal save the world, um, Noah manages to, like, um, be on good standing with the U.S. government for what he did in helping, um, save the day. And, um, the moment I see the freaking business card, um... Are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? Like, R.E.P. to the J.I. Joe stands in the audience, but like, like, I know this shouldn't bother me as much, but I find the inclusion of J.I. Joe at the movie's ending to be so friggin' stupid. Like, John Hasbro, this is like playing your cards way too early. Like, you're really gonna pull the cinematic universe route? Like, like... Haven't y'all learned the last time you tried to do that with the Align continuity? Like, 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 legal disclaimer, like, I'm well aware that G.I. Joe had a crossover with Transformers in the IDW comics, but, like, ah! Uh, like, this definitely feels like the executives forcing the director, Stephen Capel Jr., into including this, because, like, unless you're familiar with, like, the connection between G.I. Joe and Transformers, like, it makes no sense. Like, the movie is fine as it is in its own space. Like, by setting up 
a cinematic universe, you're just playing the cards way too early. Like, like, I know, like I said, this shouldn't bother me as much, but like, yeah, like, even though I'm a fan of the MCU, like, honestly, the MC, M ugh, MCU-fication of, like, movies have crossed the line. Like, no, 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 John Hasbro, no, no. When will you learn that your actions have consequences? Like, no, no. Like, honestly, guys, like, this aspect of the ending is what prevented the movie from becoming a 10 out of 10 because, like... Ugh! God, this is so freaking stupid. Other small nitpicks of the movie that I found is that I felt like Noah's mom could have had a stronger presence in the story, you know, to buy, like, the connection between, like, him and her and, like, help explain, like, Noah's motivations much better. And, like, I don't know, like, some of the CGI is a little bit... A little off but most of the time it's pretty good so like um yeah honestly i don't have much problem with the movie so um let's go get on to the good stuff everything else the best way to describe this movie overall is that um it basically fixes everything wrong with the Bayverse in terms of like not only putting BIPOC protagonists in the centerfold, giving the robots actual characters, and like having none of the gross shit associated with those movies, but it's also everything that I asked for in a Transformers movie, so let's go talk about it. Both Noah and Elena are really likable. Honestly, Noah is what Sam should have been like. Not only does Noah have great chemistry with both Mirage and Elena, but he also has um, motivations that can easily get you to sympathize with him and to connect with him. And um, you definitely understand where he's coming from, especially like with the whole entire ordeal with the transwarp key. And also what I really like is how like, there's a meaningful connection between like a human character and Optimus. Like, like basically, like they're both like this older leader type figure in their families trying to protect them, but also feel like the weight of their responsibilities on their shoulder. And you can really tell like the instant connection between both of them, which is very compelling. Elena is very enduring in her hyperfixation with history and archaeology, and you do sympathize with her wanting to get basic credit for her hard work as an intern at the museum. And like I mentioned, she has really great chemistry with Noah. What's refreshing about Elena is that this is a woman of color, specifically a black woman who is able to be her own character in a major um, Transformers media. Like, in a nutshell, I'm so glad that she's not a misogynistic stereotype. This movie understands the assignment of a depresso ego optimus. Like, he is the most compelling character in the movie for, for me because, like, you just feel so bad for him. Like, this poor guy can't catch a break. Like, not only is he burned out from the weight of expectations of his role as a prime, but, like, losing so much throughout the movie nearly drove him over the edge. Like, like there's multiple times where he makes me tear up because I just want to wanna hug the poor guy. Like... Like, honestly, like, like, watching Optimus Prime be sad is like watching a puppy getting kicked. Nobody likes that. By the way, shout out to Peter Cullen for um, bringing emotional depth to this Optimus and, like, giving his all as usual. Like, you could definitely feel, like, the amount of love he puts into this role and this is a great reminder of why he is the optimus prime 
Mirage is the best character in this movie. He's just so lovable and goofy that you can't help but smile every time he does something. Like, he not only does he have, like, some of the funniest scenes in the movie, but, like, his chemistry with Noah is just so charming and enduring. Like, it's Mirage! How could you not love him? Primal is also an enduring character for not only being a great foil to Optimus, but he's also very sympathetic that makes you really feel bad for him multiple times. And also shout out to Ron Perlman for capturing the warmth of his character that basically reminds me of his original Beast Wars incarnation. Like this is a this is really a yes tier primal for me. Eraser is the true hero of this story. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I cried when she died. Like, she deserves better. Like, like, mother deserves better. Yes, I know John Hasbro doesn't have it in them to kill off their golden goose, but I cried when B died. Leave me alone. And also, the scene where he jumped out of the plane in the final battle. Instant chills. It's so satisfying. Like, my entire movie theater clapped when that happened. Like, it is such a fantastic scene. R.C. is mother. Actually, fuck y'all. I love Pablito. Nightbird is mother. Battletrap has nice tits. Scourge is easily one of the best Transformers villains in recent memory. Like, this dude is such an evil ass motherfucker. I don't know what else could earn him that spot. Just the way he brutalizes Optimus and Bumblebee and Air Razor is just so heartbreakingly evil. And like, and like, he's so hateable, but you also really love him for just how truly evil he is. Like, he's such a great villain. The moment Unicron's theme played, I instantly got chills and dread. Like, even though he has a smaller role in this movie, this is such a great introduction to Unicron. Like, Coleman Domingo's voice acting and like the sheer menace he has in the stakes of the story is just so great. Other positives of the movie includes the soundtrack, it is a certified bop. I especially love how the main song, On My Soul, is incorporated into the score of the climax. It gave me chills and it got me very pumped up. Like, if there's a version out there um, where it's a part of the score, like, I highly recommend watch, like, listening to it. And um, several incorporations of themes, such as Arrival from the first Babers movie, gave me the feelsies. I also really love the CGI, like it is so lifelike and so polished, like you can really tell that the Transformers are there. I really like how very horror-like the scenes with Scourge's little pets are, like, the, like those, those, those little fuckers got good scare out of me once in a while. I also really love how this movie embraces being a movie about black and Latino culture, like you can definitely tell like in like the way hip like hip hop plays a role in the score and you can really tell how much it really respects the communities it wants to represent as a transformers fan of color like it's really refreshing to to feel so represented by the franchise that um, basically saved my life. And I also really like how it doesn't play into the cheap, oh, aliens influence the humans, actually. Like, Primal himself in the movie clearly states that um, while, yes, they're helping the humans, they're also not going to take credit for their genuine accomplishments. Like, especially with how, like, um, this plot thread in movies is very rooted in racism and eurocentrism like with um how it um like downplays the accomplishment of like um civilizations headed by people of color like it's really refreshing to see this movie not taking that stance 
Along with Transformers Earth Spark, which I highly recommend watching, like this movie really gives me great hope in seeing like more BIPOC representation in the Transformers franchise. Like this really gives me optimism. Like we're heading in the right direction. Like it's a long road, but we're heading in the right direction. So what is my verdict for Transformers Rise of the Beast? I'm very happy to report that it is a 9 out of 10 film. It's a 9 because of the ending. Um, great movie, highly recommended, especially if you're a Beast Wars fan. Thank y'all so much for watching. Um, as of the time I'm recording this, it is literally 1.30 in the morning. So um, as you can tell, I had a lot to say about this movie. So um, I decided to make it into a video because I feel like that explains like more in depth about my feelings about this movie than text alone and I and I'm really hoping that um, my points are articulated very well especially since I went off script for this video um, but seriously um, if you make it to the end um, thank you so much for watching um, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already um, I'm definitely gonna plan like a Beast Wars video um, later this month so consider it my treat for pride month so um anyways um thank y'all so much for watching happy pride um and i'll see you later